What if the world you thought you knew could change in an instant? This is not a hypothetical question for those who lived through the events of September 11, 2001. It was a day that started like any other day, but ended in a way that forever changed the world. Imagine New York City on a typical Tuesday morning. The sun was rising, casting its golden glow over the city that never sleeps. The air was filled with the sounds of life, the honking of taxis, the murmur of conversations, the rhythmic pulse of footsteps on concrete. The weather was almost perfect, just a slight chill in the air, a reminder that summer was coming to an end. People were starting their day, oblivious to the fact that this day would be unlike any other. Wall Street traders were heading to the stock exchange, coffee in hand, mentally preparing for another day of buy and sell. Street vendors were setting up their stalls, the tantalizing aroma of hot dogs and pretzels wafting through the air. Tourists were gathering at the base of the Twin Towers, craning their necks to take in the awe-inspiring view of the towering structures. In the city schools, children were settling into their classrooms, eager to share their summer vacation adventures. Policemen were patrolling the streets, keeping an eye out for trouble, while firefighters were starting their shifts, ready to respond at a moment's notice. In the heart of the city, the World Trade Center stood tall, its twin towers reaching towards the clear blue sky, an iconic symbol of the city's might and resilience. It was a day like any other day, a snapshot of life in one of the world's greatest cities. But as the hands of the clock moved forward, the normalcy of the morning was about to be shattered. It was a day that started with promise, a day that ended in tragedy. But as the saying goes, the calm before the storm was about to take a devastating turn. Imagine a typical Tuesday morning turning into an unimaginable nightmare. A scene all too real for the people of New York City on the 11th of September 2001. The clear blue sky of that fateful morning was rent apart as American Airlines Flight 11, commandeered by terrorists, struck the North Tower of the World Trade Center at exactly 8.46 a.m. Eastern Time. As the news of a plane hitting the North Tower started to ripple across the city, the nation, and the world, there was an initial wave of confusion. People were glued to their television sets, radios humming with the desperate attempts of broadcasters trying to make sense of the unfolding catastrophe. Speculation was rife. Was this a terrible accident? A navigation error? A pilot's last-ditch effort to avoid a larger calamity? The questions swirled, but answers were elusive. Emergency services sprang into action, racing towards the towering inferno, the symbol of American prosperity now marred by a gaping, smoking hole. The brave firefighters, police officers and paramedics, unaware of the full scope of the horror that was yet to unfold, rushed to the scene, their only thought to save as many lives as possible. Meanwhile, in the corridors of power, the shock was giving way to a grim realization. This was no small aircraft gone astray, no freak accident. This was a commercial airliner loaded with fuel for a cross-country flight that had been used as a weapon of mass destruction. As the initial shock subsided, the enormity of the event started to sink in. The North Tower, one of the twin sentinels of the New York skyline, was on fire. Thick, black smoke was billowing from the upper floors, obscuring the clear blue sky. And as the smoke spread, so did a chilling sense of dread. But as smoke billowed from the tower, it was clear that this was no ordinary accident. This was the beginning of a day that would forever be etched in the annals of history, a day when the unthinkable became reality. As the world watched in horror, the unthinkable happened again. Another commercial airliner, United Airlines Flight 175, veered off course. The world held its breath as the aircraft, seemingly with a will of its own, plunged into the South Tower of the World Trade Center, 18 minutes after the first plane had struck the North Tower. In that moment, the narrative of a freak accident crumbled. A chilling realization rippled across the globe. This was no accident but a calculated act of terror. The second plane, hitting the South Tower with a devastating impact, created a fireball of unimaginable proportions, an image seared into the collective memory of humanity. The South Tower, a marvel of modern architecture reaching over 1,300 feet into the sky, was now an inferno. The steel structure, designed to withstand the impact of a Boeing 707, was now being tested against a much larger and faster Boeing 767. The realization that this was a deliberate attack sent shockwaves around the world. The audaciousness of the act, the sheer scale of the destruction, was beyond comprehension. The Twin Towers, symbols of American financial power and prowess, were under attack. 
The reality of this new kind of warfare, waged not on distant battlefields, but in the heart of one of the world's most iconic cities was a chilling wake-up call. The world was now witness to a new level of horror. The images of the burning towers were broadcast live to millions of homes. People around the world sat glued to their television sets, a collective gasp echoing around the globe as the second plane hit. The horror was no longer confined to the streets of New York. It was now a global event, an unprecedented act of terror witnessed in real time. In a heartbeat thousands of lives were thrown into chaos and the world watched in shock. The horror had multiplied, and the world would never be the same again. The nightmare was not confined to New York City. Unbeknownst to many, a parallel horror was unfolding in two other locations, the Pentagon and the skies above Pennsylvania. On that fateful morning, American Airlines Flight 77 took a devastating detour into the Pentagon, the heart of the United States military power. The impact was cataclysmic, a cataclysm that instantly claimed lives and caused extensive damage to the western side of the Pentagon. The flaming wreckage and smoky aftermath were a stark reminder of the treacherous intent behind these attacks. Meanwhile, United Airlines Flight 93 was also commandeered, its destination unknown but undoubtedly sinister. Yet the passengers aboard Flight 93 were not resigned to their fate. Amidst the fear and uncertainty, they banded together, determined to reclaim control of their flight. They exemplified the indomitable human spirit, their actions a testament to the courage that resides within us all. Through whispered phone calls to loved ones we've learned of their valor. We've heard the chilling words, let's roll, uttered by passenger Todd Beamer, a rallying cry that echoed through the cabin as they prepared to confront the hijackers. Their courageous counterattack, however, ended in a tragic crash in a field in Pennsylvania, far from any populated areas, preventing further loss of life on the ground. The passengers of Flight 93 were ordinary people thrust into an extraordinary situation. Their actions that day were not born out of training or obligation, but out of a deep-seated drive to protect and preserve life. In their final moments they chose action over despair, defiance over surrender. The stories of the Pentagon and Flight 93 are marked by devastation and loss, but they also shine a light on the resilience and bravery of the human spirit. They remind us that even in our darkest hours, we are capable of extraordinary acts of courage. In the face of unimaginable terror, courage and bravery shone through. As the world held its breath, the unimaginable became reality. The colossal towers, once the embodiment of human achievement and progress began to crumble. The North Tower, hit first but collapsing last, stood for an agonizing hour and 42 minutes after impact. Its fall, a horrific ballet of dust and debris, lasted but a few heart-stopping seconds. The South Tower hit second, fell first. A mere 56 minutes after being struck, the South Tower began to buckle under the intense heat and unyielding pressure. Its collapse was no less harrowing, a terrifying spectacle that echoed around the world in real time. The twin collapses unleashed an unfathomable wave of chaos and devastation. The bustling streets of Lower Manhattan were instantly transformed into a war zone, blanketed under a shroud of dust and debris. The sheer force of the collapse, coupled with the resulting fires and smoke, created a scene of apocalyptic proportions. In the midst of this devastation, the loss of life was staggering. Nearly 3,000 souls were lost within a few short hours. Among them, were hundreds of brave first responders. Firefighters, police officers, paramedics, who rushed into danger, heedless of their own safety, in a desperate bid to save others. Their heroic efforts, their selfless sacrifice, stand as a testament to the indomitable spirit of humanity in the face of unimaginable adversity. Yet, as the dust settled, the magnitude of the tragedy was just beginning to sink in. The once iconic Twin Towers, symbols of New York's resilience and ambition, were reduced to a smoldering pile of rubble. The skyline, so emblematically etched into the consciousness of the world, was irrevocably altered. In the blink of an eye, the New York skyline and the world were forever changed. In the wake of the unimaginable, the world was left to pick up the pieces. The immediate aftermath of the September 11th attacks was a scene of chaos and devastation, yet also one of profound unity and resilience. As smoke filled the sky and ash covered the streets, the world watched in shock and disbelief. But amidst the horror, there were also stories of incredible courage, compassion, and determination. In the hours following the attacks, the search for survivors began. 
Emergency services, firefighters, police officers and countless volunteers flock to the scene to dig through the rubble, holding onto the hope that they might find someone alive. Every rescued individual was a glimmer of hope, a testament to the indomitable human spirit that refused to be extinguished, even in the darkest of times. Meanwhile, hospitals in New York and across the country were inundated with the injured. Doctors, nurses and medical staff worked tirelessly, often without rest, to treat the wounded. These healthcare professionals displayed an unwavering commitment to their oath to do no harm, and their efforts undoubtedly saved many lives. As the dust settled, it became clear that the tragedy of September 11th was not confined to the immediate victims. Families and friends of the nearly 3,000 people who lost their lives that day were left to grapple with an unimaginable loss. The grief was palpable, not only in America but around the world. Yet in the midst of this profound sorrow, there was also a sense of unity and togetherness. In the days and weeks that followed, Americans and people around the world stood together in solidarity. Candlelight vigils were held, flags were raised, and messages of support poured in from every corner of the globe. This unity, this shared sense of humanity, acted as a beacon of hope amidst the despair. The aftermath of the September 11th attacks also marked the beginning of the War on Terror. In response to the attacks, the United States and its allies launched a global campaign to dismantle terrorist networks. This was a war unlike any other, fought not against a nation, but against an ideology. Yet, even as the world grappled with the complexities of this new reality, the resilience of humanity shone through. People rebuilt, communities came together, and the world moved forward. The scars of that day remain, a somber reminder of the lives lost and the challenges faced. But they also serve as a testament to the strength and resilience of the human spirit, to our capacity to endure, to heal, and to hope. In the face of the darkest day, humanity's resilience shone through. 22 years on, we remember. The echoes of September 11th still resonate today. The impact of that day has etched itself deeply into our collective consciousness, shaping our world in ways we continue to grapple with. As we remember, it is not just the events of that day we recall, but the people, the mothers and fathers, sons and daughters, friends and colleagues, whose lives were tragically cut short. Across America and around the world, the events of September 11th are commemorated each year. Memorials like the National September 11th Memorial and Museum in New York City stand as solemn reminders of the nearly 3,000 lives lost. The names of every victim etched in bronze, a lasting tribute to their memory, a testament that they are not forgotten. In Pennsylvania, the Flight 93 National Memorial honors the 40 passengers and crew members who bravely fought back, preventing further tragedy. And at the Pentagon, the 9-11's Pentagon Memorial stands as a poignant reminder of the 184 individuals who perished there. But it is not only in stone and bronze that we remember. We remember in the hearts of those who survived, in the resilience of families who have had to carry on without their loved ones. The ongoing effects of that day continue to be felt, with thousands still dealing with physical and emotional scars. In their strength and their courage, we see the true spirit of America. We remember in the stories we share, in the lessons we teach our children. We remember in our determination to build a world where such acts of terror are relegated to the annals of history. As we look back on that fateful September morning, let us remember not just the horror, but the heroism, the unity and the resilience that emerged in its wake. We remember, we mourn, and we honor those lost on that fateful day. For in remembering we ensure that the world never forgets.